Hi everyone, I'm Chantal Broderick and welcome along to this very special broadcast today. Now, over the coming weeks, the Fitness Business Podcast will be supporting you through the COVID-19 crisis with a series of special video interviews. Today's interview is brought to you by our friends at MyZone. Now, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome along today's special guest. She's the founder and co-CEO of Progress Retail, Terry Hawkins. Terry, welcome along. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. Oh, Chantel, I always love time with you. I absolutely <laughs> love spending time with you as well. And just a quick reminder to anyone, if, uh, if you recognize Terry, maybe you've worked with her over the years, or maybe you heard Terry's interview back on episode, what was it? I think it's about 168. It was a while ago, but we had a wonderful Thousands chat. Ago. It was, it was years ago, but we had a wonderful chat back then. And Terry very kindly in the last 24 hours has, uh, has agreed to come and join us today for this special broadcast. And it's literally 24 hours ago, I think, we emailed you and said, hey, would you mind coming and sharing a little bit of your wisdom and your inspiration? with all of the FBP family. So Terry, before we get into the conversation or the topic for today, do you wanna to just tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Yeah, um, so I've been around for a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna put my glasses on. I just, I like to sort of start, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then I, I, but then First I can't impression. see anything. <laughs> exactly, then you have that look like, you know, where is everybody? Um, and so, so, 30, so 35 years actually, I started in the, in the education business, um, started in retail on the shop floor, uh, very quickly, you know, seven years, went into national training roles, had the amazing fortune actually when I was 24 though, to work for a Japanese training company for a short period of time, um, little did I realise it was going to come back around, um, and that's when personal growth was unheard of, and so... I got the chance to spend, uh, it was a five day living course from like, gosh, seven in the morning, we went through till midnight, but they were all CEOs. One woman was from India and she was responsible for the censorship. She was the head of the censorship board in India. Um, it's like whatever many millions of people there, 600 million people. And so at 24 years of age, I got the chance to look, to see what it looked like, but if I owned my life. And if I took full responsibility for myself, my feelings and so forth, and we all know my past and so forth or not, but anyway, it's, a, it's another story another time. Look it up on uh, whatever it is. I think we episode. talked about it on the, we, yeah, I'll put a link one, to the episode eight. for everyone. Um, but yeah, so I got into, I started my own company when I was 27, 28 years of age, people in progress, a training company. I had $165 or $67 or something, card table and a wonky computer. Um, had no self-esteem, no self-worth, didn't know what I was doing, had no idea. But it's funny because I believed everybody else's version of me. So that was enough. And so I ha they just said that for some reason I just had a way of words and I had a way of influencing people in a retail space. Cut a long story short, 30 years later, uh, the business just went from all of our business came through word of mouth. Um, and what I did though was I wrapped personal growth inside of skills development and so forth and uh and then two years ago three years ago i decided that i wanted to get my content online i tried in 2005 i actually did my first iteration of my care program online uh and then of course didn't know how to market it i think we talked about that in the last video uh on the last interview and then met my business partner and we decided to build our own platform and so now we have our own education platform um, which has a learning management system inside of it. So we have our own learning room and then we have other parts to the platform as well. So that's sort of where I am at now. So I'm a startup. Um, we might as well hit the road running and just be really honest and transparent because everyone's talking about, you know, let's just be transparent. That's right. Like, that's what it's all about at the moment, isn't it? So well, tell us, like, you go. No, I was just going to say, I think transparency is, I'll be as transparent as I want you to know. Mm. Instead of, well, I'm a startup, I've got $150,000 debt uh, and I've got $6,000 in the bank and my monthly expenses are $20,000. And I'm saying that because I want people to go, have a look. Mm. Oh, something just came into me then. So I'm saying this to whoever it is. I'm going to take my glasses off. I've got to say it. I don't, and I'm, people think I'm nuts, but if you're sitting there and you think you can't get through this because you don't have enough money, freaking call me. I'm serious. I don't want anyone doing anything stupid because you're trying to get away from it. All you're trying to do is get relief. That's all it is, is relief. And you will get through this. 
There are plenty of couches out there. Let's get rid of the, the I'm going to swear, I never swear, bullshit persona of I've got to look like I've got it all together. You do have it all together because you're telling the truth. So uh, even reach out to Chantel. If you're having any of those, they're not dark moments, and we'll talk about this, they are simply your truth coming to the surface. Let's just bring it up. Let's deal with it. Let's walk through it together. You'll be okay. I can promise you. You guys can see right now why we called Terry yesterday to get her onto this interview. And it, it, it's all going to, it's all going to become very apparent in, in this time that we spent together this morning. And um, so, so I think let's, let's dive in Terry and thank you so much because it, your message and that's going to be the first of many I know will will impact so many people. And you're right. You said before, you know, at an early age, people realised that you had a way with words and you have a way of influencing and impacting people. And that's exactly why we wanted to get you on the interview today, because we are all feeling it. There, there is no one that is not affected by this crisis right now. And I think that it you know, we're in a different world. We're working from home. You're working from home. I'm, I'm, I'm at home and everyone out there is just facing this whole different world. And it's, it's impossible not to be affected by it in some way, shape or form. So Beautiful I would sense. love to hear your take on the situation. And, you know, given everything, you know, that you've been through and that you are experiencing personally yourself right now, give us some of your advice as to, to how we can handle this situation currently okay um so that's so beautiful that you say that and i have to say i don't know why and i'm not so i i i know i come across very strong and i get lots of criticism around how i'm all over the place and i'm doing you know oh, she's up you know she doesn't talk in a straight line and i don't um but i almost started crying before and not for me but for the people that we can feel you just said it everyone's feeling it everyone's feeling it and we're supposed to feel it that's the whole thing it's like you know i can look out my window and i i thought this the other day i was just looking out my window and i couldn't see a, i live on the boardwalk in redondo beach i couldn't see a soul there wasn't a single soul to be seen and i looked out to all the houses on the hills and the apartments next door and and i knew they were filled with people and I, I'd never felt closer to my fellow man than looking out the window that day knowing, well, they're keeping me safe and I'm keeping them safe. Um, so it is about feeling. And I think we're just, we don't allow ourselves to go there because it's actually quite painful. And, you know, one of the things we're talking about before we started the call was, I think I'm actually excited for the planet. I really am. I think that our shadow side is coming up um, and your shadow side can't come up. Um, unless you give it space, you know, uh, you ha you have, we, have, we have to, and I'm not the expert on this. Please understand, like, I don't know, don't think of me as an authority on anything. Like, truly, I go, if you don't believe me or you don't, it doesn't resonate, then go and look it up, go and research it, go and do your own journey, go and do your own learning. Um, the shadow to me is the the part of us, it's not the, we can call it ugly, but we, oh my gosh, I, st I do have it. I'm doing this new keynote and it's about a broomstick. And this is my baby broomstick. That's, that's your little broomstick. That's my baby broomstick. And no, I'm not a witch. <laughs> so, well, you know, my kids might say this. Um, but I was going to say, you know, we go the shadow and we say, oh, the shadow's up here and the light's down here. Well, it is, but if you're all light, and no shadow, then you have an imbalance. And if you're all shadow and no light, you don't have a balance. And so we need all parts of us. You know, it's like people who uh, are often in abusive relationships are because they don't, they have not learnt boundaries. They have not learnt to speak up for themselves. You know, the bully and the, the victim are either end of the broomstick. They're both equally responsible. So the shadow is not an ugly discarded part of ourselves that we want to get it rid of we want to meet it so if you think about it we're all in confined spaces and it's fun for 15 minutes isn't it isn't it you go oh, i know what we'll have picnics in the lounge room 
we'll read to the kids every day. You know, we'll have group cuddles. It's going to be good quality time. And, you know, within two hours, you want to punch them in the face. Um, I had someone on the phone, the other, I was doing a, a call the other day with a client and she was going to go mad at her husband for the dog barking. <laughs> Him making the dog bark, right? Exactly. <laughs> and it's like, it's not it his fault. fault. Or, or you don't have any money because you didn't prep for it. I haven't prepped for this. I didn't oh, well, save for this. Nobody expected it, right? No. And, and no one did. I don't want to hear from the people who learnt this lesson 10 years ago. You know, I learnt this lesson and I've, we saved for this and now we're fine. We're going to get through it. I think we need to hear from the people who go, I have no idea. My son and I, because my son lives at home with me, we have become so... I said, call everybody. I'm not calling them. I'm saying, call everybody. Um, yeah, I think that the shadow is something that we just need to look at. Companies have a shadow. Everybody has a shadow. My shadow is my anger. My shadow is my self-doubt. My shadow is putting everybody else first and not myself. Uh, my shadow is expecting people to return what they get given. You know? Um, so, yeah, I'd love us to... I, I'm just going to... Um, I'm just writing as, like, as things come to mind, like energy exchange... So let, let's dive into this because what I want to do is to be able to help people out there that are in these, are feeling these dark times, are, are really getting affected by it because I think that we all are, you know, what are some of the ways that we can handle it? How can we address it or, or what advice would you give to people who are feeling that shadow, that darkness, that the difficulties of this situation, either from a personal perspective or within their business, because we've got gyms out there and I know there are, there are owners and, and managers of businesses that are feeling physically sick because they've had to um, stand down their staff. You know, yeah. they've had to make changes to their business that they never in a million years would have dreamt that they've, they've had to change and it's been out of their control. So, Terry, what kind of advice would you give to those people that are in that position at the moment? I, I can, I saw, here we go again. I can see both sides. I really can because I work for the, see, well, a lot of the time when you're an employee mindset, you go, how could they do that to us? Mm. And I go, they didn't do anything to you. You chose to be an employee. Therefore, you put your financial security in employment like you have to be real it's the same with me as a business owner I put my financial security in my own hands so if you have to let people go like it, you've got to do the math and I think it's just I've done all these little videos and I, I don't want to repeat myself in case someone's you know seen them but there's two things the first thing question I ask myself and as you know like and I have I've come through a very very tough uh, personal journey as a child, you know, every form of abuse you could ever imagine. I actually get tired of actually telling the story. Um, what is the worst thing that could possibly happen? I think that's the question I ask myself. So I have lost my wealth probably three times now. So first time was through marriage. The second time was when I came to America and I got very, very sick. And the third time is now with this startup. So not that I had a lot when I started, but anyway. Um, but, you know, sold my house, took the thing. What is the worst case scenario? Like, you've got to ask yourself, what's the worst case scenario? For me, is death. Like, anything above death to me is here. Now, some people will go, their pride. I know people who have committed suicide because their pride was more important than their life. And that's when you've got to go, that's just your shadow. That's just your ego. So the first thing I would do is I would literally, and then you name, so what you do is you, you future pace. So you sit here and you go, okay, what is the worst thing that's going to happen? You go into the future and you imagine, so you've got to pause, be still, be quiet. And it's a personal event. It's not a couple event. It's a personal event. And then you can come together as a couple. What's the worst thing that would happen as a couple? What's the worst thing that would happen as a family? What's the worst thing that would happen as a... So as an individual, I'll start with me. You go into the future. And then you literally go into your imaginative mind, feel it, and feel it. 
and go into it and start to bring up the feelings. It'll hit your heart because we've actually been trained over the last, say, 10 years to not feel anymore. Your heart, now you're not getting anxiety. You don't have anxiety. Let's all settle down. Don't send me hate mail. I'll just delete it. We don't have anxiety. It's actually, this is so true. We experience feelings. You experience anxiety. You experience happiness. You experience sadness. You experience shock. You experience it. So experience, emotion means it has to have motion. It's supposed to come up and through. What we do is we feel that the heart starts to flutter. We're not used to it. So because it feels different and feels awkward, we think it's a stranger in our body. So we repel it. So we get away from it. So what do we do? We get ourselves distracted. I'll get my phone. Games have gone through the roof. One of the number one industries outside of groceries because we're all idiots because we think we're actually in a starvation. What the hell is that? It's, we're not, we don't have a food shortage. Here in Australia, it's all about the toilet paper. Oh, it's the same here. Apparently, we're, we're going to run out. <laughs> it's the same here. I, I went back to when we were poor. So when we, if you did a wee, you could use three squares. <laughs> you're, you're rationing by square. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. did. We had to put ration as a kid. Yeah. Um, and so as those feelings come up, um, and I know people have got heat on that, when they go, I have anxiety. My anxiety is through the roof. Don't give it a house. No feelings meant to have its home in your body. So you sit there and you breathe through it. Now grief will come up, sadness or shock, shame, whatever it might be will come up. How do you think I felt? I couldn't even get the words out. I was sitting on my bed. It was on Sunday. And I, I, start, I went, because I, I thought I just, she was my best friend. Well, how do I get this out? I said, oh, and I started, hey, listen, love, I just need to, Pushka. started bawling. She just held the space for me, tears rolling in my eyes barely get it out and I said listen if this all goes to you can say shit that's all right yeah that was the word I I could not get it out and I just and then eventually like through the choked words just bleeding tears um I said she goes don't even say it she goes there'll always be a space in my home for you always and I think that's what I want to do what's the worst case scenario your partner leaves you trust me you will get over it. Have you ever run into an old, an old boyfriend or girlfriend? Oh yeah. Like at a Haven't we all? You? Haven't we all? And you go, and in your dreams, you think, oh my God, they're so gorgeous. <laughs> and then you see them, you go, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> so what's the worst case scenario? Number one. I think that's future pace. Go into the feeling, bring it back into your body. Let the feelings come up. Manage them, breathe through them, breathe through the nose, out through the mouth. Nitric oxide into the blood system. Calms the body down. <sighs> we'll all be okay. Mm -hmm. We'll all be okay. Um, number two, money. Now, I've, I've made all these notes I showed you before. I've got stickers. Everywhere. Show us your notes. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Because you can tell by behind I, me. Like, I literally, I just... This everyone now stuff. knows... So I'm a whiteboard person. You're a uh, you're a, a sticky note person. I can't see whiteboards rubs off. Yeah, that's why I like it. That's why I like it, Terry, because I feel like once I've done it, I just go, it's gone. Oh, that must be like poor childhood. See, I can't I... <laughs> off my list. It's done. But anyway, I've got, to, I've got to do the highlight, you know. So and then I, you know, because I can go back and go, oh, I've done all this. It's whatever actually... works. Whatever yeah, works. and I go, well, like, if you get it out of you. Mm. So the worst thing is we get into overwhelm because it sits inside of our brain and your brain can only cope with, like, so many attention units. Um, but the moment we got off the call, I just started data dumping everything mm -hmm. that was coming into my head. Mm -hmm. um, what, one of the first thoughts that came into my head, and this is uh, here I've got to do a health check inventory of you and your business. Health check inventory of you and your business. And... So I wrote some of these down because everyone's in panic. And I guarantee you that if I was on the Titanic and it was, and I, I said, listen, I'm selling uh, learn to swim classes. No one would, even if I was giving them away for free, no one would take them because when you're in a panic mode, see p panic is in the future. Anxiety is in the future. What's the worst thing? That's gonna, like, so we're going, Oh my God, this is going to happen. Depression's in the past. We're sad or regretful for what has happened, what's been done, so forth. But if you just pause, just pause. Hit the pause button right now. Just breathe, pause, go right. Health check. 
Inventory, finances. I got a zero on that one. Uh, great feedback, Terry Hawkins. You're 58 years of age. You know what we think in 21, maybe 22. Uh, but <laughs> totally. Oldie but a goodie. Um, <laughs> I forgot to hit that, you know, that face thing on. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, finances, I'm, no, I'm not good at. So from this day forward, I am becoming, I am, I am flip man, I am. Mm -hmm. I, have, uh, I have responsibility for my finances. Education, I'm really good there. Educate yourself. What's your product offering? So pause and think about your business. This is a chance for you to really, really be empathic I live for empathy, be empathic for your customers. What do they actually really want? Oh, but I can't do it. You know, just get on and start videoing. People go, oh, I can't. I go, right, well, you don't have to because everybody else is going to be on there and you'll just miss out. Um, so get, do your exercise classes or something. Um, I, I must admit, I am seeing some ads and I'm so turned off by them. 30% off, you know, this... They're still trying to make a deal. And I'm like, uh, no, sorry. Have a bit of consideration for what's going on right now. Um, but think about an offer. And so as a business, I just think sit down, do your audit. So do, you know, education, finances. It's funny how I put those two up front because they're my number one, you know, number one and two. Um, have a look at your team, your staffing. So we're going to get rid of all of our staff. Let's be honest. Some of us did want to get rid of them. Isn't it true? Some of those people, honesty. you wanted to move them on, but you didn't want to go through the whole HR nightmare. And so, but it's true. This will give companies a good chance to clear out what they, who they didn't want actually to be on their team. And it's also going to make the, the team member step up. Who gives you, just because you get a job doesn't mean to say you get a free ride. So make yourself viable. Make yourself un... Like one of the things I wrote, because we do, I'm doing a couple of little um, programs... Uh, but one of them is educate yourself. So if you're an employee, make yourself the one they pick when they rehire. Yeah. Great advice. Yeah. It's a pick of the pick of the crop. Yeah. So sit down and do an inventory of your staff um, and then adapt. <clears throat> so I work in retail we, our, our whole things about retail. So I'm actually everywhere I'm going now, it's all about zoom. So everything's online. Yeah. Now, don't worry, because I, I truly know we'll come back and there could be a way. So I'm thinking, all right, we've got, let's say, gut feel. And I saw this little kid in India who said he, pre he had a premonition when it was going to start and he's had a premonition of when it's going to end. So I'm going to believe him. And so <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> when, 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 when exactly did he say it's going to end? End of May. Okay. Now, be careful what you wish for. Let's, let's see what Steve is right. It's a universal collective. So what one believes, the next believes, and we will make it come true. Um, I'm hoping it'll be mid-May, early May, because um, my video editor's getting married on the 22nd and she Aww. wants it to go. Um, exactly. So let's just say we've got six weeks. All right, we've got six weeks to absolutely clean up everything, clean out our cupboards, clean out our business, clean out our closet, clean out our staff, Get them training. I cannot believe that people are stopping everything. Um, I go, get online. Like we've, our clients, we've left it open. So a lot of them have just paused their payments. We're like, we're, but we can't ask them to work. I'm like, you're not. You're saying get educated because you may not be one of the ones that get picked. So am I talking too much? No, no. I just wanted to jump in and say, I'm so glad you brought that up because I've actually got another interview coming next week and it is with a gym owner who has who has kept their staff on not in their normal jobs but is using this time to put them through educational courses and in particular like going back through old episodes of the fitness business podcast and saying to them right here's the show go right. through you know like so there are amazing opportunities to learn at the moment like oh. i'm going to jump on and do some do a course next week in and finance, do it like a book club. You oh know, my God, like, here's, a, here's an idea. Yeah, it's a do it like a book club. So go, right, everybody, watch this. Mm. Now we're all going to get onto a Zoom call and we're going to have a meeting around the five core um, areas that you got from it, blah, 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 and the whole thing. Yes, so, I love that. Great time I to be learning. A great idea. Now, mm. I had someone say to me, and this is the other thing too, and my time has come. Empathy has been my number one for 30 I did my first presentation on empathy when I was 24 years of age. 
the world thinks they understand empathy, but we are cognitively experiencing everything on this planet. We cognitively empathize. So we think about how we empathize. Like, so um, I'll think about how you feel. I'll think about putting myself in your shoes, but I won't put myself in your shoes because I have to actually have that emotional empathy. And emotional empathy is where we feel. Now, the moment we feel, we all freak out, give it a name, anxiety, stress, whatever, drop into it deeper, become sympathetic. And then all of a sudden we have an ailment. I'm like, oh my God, we have, to, the world needs to feel. We need to feel. So um, I would be doing every bit of interpersonal development I possibly could. I love that advice. I think that is so important. And Terry, earlier in when we were talking just before, you slipped in the word flip man, but not everyone will have known what you were talking about. And because it's so relevant to our keep me fit vibration at the end of this chat, I think it is super important that we just have a quick chat about pit man and flip man. I love it. And I'm tell every, tell everyone what we're talking about. Okay. So flip man, flip man. Oh, hello everybody. No, sorry. <laughs> I'm doing it. I was doing a Zoom call with one of my team in Australia yesterday. She's got two kids and they're sitting on a lap crawling over. So I literally... Oh, my God. They would have it loved was that. So, it was so funny um, because they were just getting distracted and the whole thing. And next thing I went, hello, my name's Lucy. And that was my cat. See, I coloured in my hat. Oh, it's got a little <laughs> fingernail hat. Oh, my God. It was so funny. Um, okay. So Flip Man, this is little Flip Man. And it, people think he's a toy, but... He's not a toy. He's actually a process. So there's pit man who lives in the pit of misery and there's flip man and flip man is a five-step process for uh, repatterning your habits. And so what happens is, so there's habits and then there's goals and people don't realize that habits actually form the momentum to create good goals. Um, and we are, we get very, very lazy. And so the reason I'm bringing up my, um, my iPad is I just recorded. So that's the kids version. So these, I feel like I'm doing a pitch now, but I'm not, I could, I would give it away for free if I could. These are on iTunes. Now, if you've got children and you're at home, um, cause I'm reading them, I'm going to put them on my website and give them away for free. But so it's a whole storybook on let's do love. Yeah. And so this is all about, um, pit man and so forth. I'm just trying to find pit man. I know she goes, all right, we didn't actually want this whole story. He's in here somewhere. Um, Pitman is the part of us that goes into now. It's not grief. It's not sadness. It's not real emotion. Pitman is all of the, here he is. And haven't we felt like that? So Pitman is blame. So when you go into the pit, you go, it's not my fault. They did it to me. I can't believe no one's doing this. Um, I can't believe they like, like your, your employer. I can't believe they sacked me. Well, they didn't. They had to actually keep the company alive. So the company is the mother on the plane with the oxygen mask. And unless the company, unless there's something to go back to, who cares, you know? Um, so Hitman puts it outside of you, whereas Flipman owns it and says, well, you know what? I can't change what happened to me. I can't change the situation. And people go, but I can change how I feel about it. No, you can actually change the pattern. And I, I wrote this down actually. It's in my, oh, I've got a giveaway. Oh, what? Stop it. <laughs> we just have. How did you organise so, that so fast? No, I just thought of it then. It's a new program we put onto our platform called Planning to Win. And I'm going to try and work it that I can get the videos. I'll work it somehow. Okay. And there's a 32-page workbook. That would be amazing. It's a goal-setting program. Oh. And so it's all around finances, everything. Yeah? So let's, let's do that. But one of the questions in there is, what are the habits? Where is it? I've got to read it to you because I wrote it down. Um, what are the, whoa, here it is. What is the strategy you use to not achieve your goals? Most of us will go, this is my strategy for achieving my goals. What's your unconscious strategy that actually stops you from achieving what you want? What comes up for you? Some of us will go into such a deep state that we end up not getting out of bed. You know, some of us will 
spend our whole energy and time regurgitating the story of the pit and not move forward. So in the pit, I always say empathy for yourself, compassion, kindness, understanding, and for others. Empathy allows you to pause from the pain while you can get the wisdom because you can't get the wisdom when you're in the pit. When you're having empathy, you can get the wisdom. You can go, all right, well, that stuff happened to me, you know, for five minutes when I was four and I've carried it for the next 50 years. What's the wisdom I got from that? Well, we're all victims of victims. We all hurt, um, whatever it might be. So that's Pitman Flipman, very, very simply. But I just reckon if you're, a, if you're an adult watching this and you've got kids or you just don't like reading, get the kids' book, one of the kids' books. And every children's book, it goes through, see, say, feel, do, be. Well, actually, that we don't do B, but um, but see, say, feel, do. And then if you go visual, auditory, kinesthetic, so see it, you've got to see, future pace, see it. Can you see it? Can, can you visualise it? A lot of us can visualise a disaster mm -hmm. very clearly. Mm -hmm. yeah? If Absolutely. you keep doing that, uh, we lead our relationships with, you better not do that again. We go looking for, listening for, feeling for, how they're going to get under our skin. And then we go, there it is. You never change. Instead of see, say, feel, do. So anyway. What we're going to do is I will, uh, I'll grab the link so everyone can check out the book and the kids book. Cause I think that will be of interest right. to a lot of people at the moment. So Terry, look, I know, I know that you and I could, could talk all day long and there's so much to dive into, but I think we, I, I do want to finish off, this conversation with our keep me fit inspiration because i think that you know with everything we've talked about with where everyone is at the moment i would love you to just share i guess one key message for them to take home today so what would you say would be your number one most important piece of advice for people to to flip that switch you know to to really take that flip man perspective on things you know for, for now and in the weeks or, or months ahead I think the most important question to ask is how much is enough? You know, like how much really is enough? And I think when you can decide how much is enough um, as a company, like how much profit is enough? How much do you really need to make, you know, um, as an individual, how much is enough? How much do I need to be happy? Not comparative to somebody else, um, but for myself to be, to be happy, to be fulfilled. Um, and I think the best, just a fun way, I think, to finish, when I do leadership training and I talk about how managing people and leading people is very similar to, uh, I'll take glasses off for this in it, da da um, And I'm sorry if I sound crazy too. I, I apologise to people if I'm like a bit of a nut. I just get nervous about time running out. But um, should see me over three days, I'm fantastic. Um, but when I'm doing leadership training, I, I, I said it to parenting and I go, great leaders are like great parents and we guide and influence a person's perception of an experience. That's basically what it's about. And so I usually tell the story about if you're a pit man parent uh, and let's say you lose everything. So, and I've said this before the coronavirus. Um, and so let's just say, so you go to your kids and you go, all right, kids, listen, we've lost everything. We've got no money. We've had to sell the house. We're going to live in a tent. We're taking you out of private school and you're going to be homeschooled and your mother only got to fourth grade. So good luck. Um, and I hope you like baked beans. Well, the flip man leader goes, who likes camping? <laughs> I love that story. So, oh. It truly is like, don't give it more drama than it needs. People are dying. Australia, get inside. What are you doing? You need to go inside, stay inside, and you'll be fine for 14 days. Apparently, you can last for 10 days without food, I think. Isn't that it? right? We're not in a food shortage, people. I don't know what's going on. So, um, Chantelle, I love you for reaching out. I have felt nervous all the way through this. Oh. Um, I just want oh. people to know you're never ready, and that's what makes you human, and we need more of you. Thank you so, so I much, I love you, Chantelle. Sherry. You're beautiful. Thank you so, so much. We love you so much for doing this and for, you know, like literally 
from yesterday turning around and saying, sure, I'll jump on and, and talk to the FBP family and, and share my wisdom with everyone. And, uh, and we are truly, truly grateful for your time, Terry. Thank you for sharing those stories. And I think for us to understand that perspective and to me, everything was in that last takeaway with Pitman and Flipman and, uh, and uh, you know, Hashtag let's just get, <laughs> <laughs> let's just get ready to go camping, right? So I love it, Terry. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. And I'm going to put your contact details right below here in the video. Our amazing Diana is going to pop those in for us and, uh, and also the details for, uh, for the book as well. So thank you so much, Terry. And listen, I'm, I'm going to have a coffee, a coffee meeting, uh, like a coffee. A Zoom coffee? Uh, a Zoom coffee yep. next week. Oh, no, I'm actually, I'm, I'm doing it on whatever it is anyway. It doesn't matter. If, if you guys want to do a Zoom coffee. Thank with, you. Like, I'm thinking 20 people because it's too hard to manage more than that. And uh, maybe we can have a champagne. I know. Yeah. It might be Zoom happy hour, I think. But I had one of those last week. It was fabulous. <laughs> so let's do it. Let's do Zoom it. So happy 20, hour first 20 people. Heap of fun. Let's, let's do, do it. it. We'll get it organised. Thank, Thank you so you. much and again, Terry. Thank you. Safe passage, humans. Safe passage. And to you.